Check out cannabis company Green Thumb Industries, blazing higher this month, up 18% over that period. Shares were down today, though, despite a better than expected earnings report. The company posting a 14% rise in second quarter revenue. Joining us now is Green Thumb CEO Ben Colvler. Hi, Ben. It's nice to have you here. Thank you for being uh, with us on the show this evening. I, this may sound like a silly question, but pricing seems to play such a key when we're, whenever we're talking about cannabis, especially when you're talking about the legal market versus the non-legal market. And then, of course, everyone is throwing inflation in as, as an excuse when things don't go right this quarter. So how does inflation play a role in your company and what happened this quarter? Uh, sure. Thanks for having me. Um... You know, it's certainly a factor. The U.S. consumer is under pressure. But what we can say and say with confidence is that the U.S. consumer is alive and well for cannabis. There's strong demand. Uh, we had record numbers. And you can see we grew 5% quarter over quarter, 15% year over year. And we continue with a strong margin, bringing our EBITDA margin over 30% again this quarter. Are you growing with, with the new customers? Are you growing with increased usage by current customers? What's your demographic makeup right now of, of who is buying from you? Yeah, there are new customers coming in the store every day. We're seeing strong demographics there, but the real key catalyst to growth are new states coming online. In the last quarter, we saw New Jersey turn on adult use for the first time. That means anyone 21 and over can legally buy cannabis. We have a large market share position in New Jersey as it gets going. And there are additional catalysts in the portfolio and in the country, really. We're going to see Connecticut and Rhode Island go from medical to adult use later this year. And in 2023, 2024, states like Virginia, New York, and others. So that's going to turn the U.S. legal cannabis industry from about 25 billion into a number like 50 or 75 billion over the medium and long term. Hey, Ben, it's Tim. So great numbers. Uh, the sequential growth is something that I think investors are very happy to see. I, I think you and I could probably agree that the investment community sometimes is more focused on the macro. Uh, one of the great things about GTI's performance is consistency, predictability. Um, talk to me about the CPG business you're in and what the, you saw in some of those trends. New Jersey obviously was a, a major driver, a new state coming online, high margin. Uh, but the core business is solid. Talk about that. Yeah, the core business is solid because the core U.S. consumer continues to demand cannabis for well-being. And we're in the consumer products business branding our products. So Rhythm, Bebo, Incredibles are gaining incredible traction around the country. We're seeing Dog Walkers as the nation's number one pre-roll brand. And as we bring these branded products to people in New Jersey, New York, Virginia, Connecticut, Rhode Island, we're seeing a lot of traction, a lot of brand recognition, and a lot of relationship with the consumer. So cannabis is a growth industry. Uh, it's hard to predict month over month, quarter over quarter, but we're confident looking out a year, three, five, the industry is going to be way bigger than it is today. And, and Ben, I have to ask you about macro dynamics, at least. Uh, I'm an investor in the space. I run an ETF. It does drive the sentiment in the sector. So just quickly, anything before midterms, anything for year end that's going to move the market? We're seeing a lot of talk in D.C. We're not seeing a lot of action. But if we can see safe banking, which yeah. could lead to listing on a major U.S. stock exchange, which would allow investors, a lot of Americans sitting at home, the ability to buy stocks and the products they're consuming, we see tailwind behind the stock. Thank you very much, Ben. Appreciate you joining us. Let's trade this. Tim, your take on cannabis right now as an investor, as you stated. So one of the things investors have to always remember, cannabis, like every other high growth, high multiple, high risk sector, um, has traded at, at a beta to the underlying market. And you've seen uh, the type of rally in the cannabis sector that you've seen in other spaces. Uh, the issues, you mentioned it, inflation, the consumer being tapped out. Cannabis was the ultimate consumer trade uh, during COVID. And I think the comps here, and you're starting to see this inflection in the second half. I think you're going to see much better growth in the second half of the year. You should not be investing in cannabis purely on a federal headline you're expecting to see. Do your work do your homework it's it's a very interesting time valuation wise in cannabis karen where are you on the cannabis trade is this something that intrigues you at all or is this way too far off for you to look at to look at right now it's i, I don't own any which is different to say like i'd never own any sure. i wouldn't say that um but i just haven't <laughs> I, you know i've been waiting a while to see how things evolve and sometimes there's disappointment even when they do get approval right we right. were talking earlier in the sh on the break about how sort of black market still right right so i haven't really followed the evolution certainly not as closely as tim i don't have exposure there but i'm not against it you know i'm not saying i've never owned it i'm not saying i would you know yeah. guy no i won't go down that road but i'll say we've been saying this for years now constellation brands was so early to this space and i think they're reaping the rewards now that stock's within a whisper of an all-time high and i th still think you can stay with this you know tim mentioned the stock for years 
I have as well. So the way to play it for me is a name like STZ. The banking issue I do think is key that Ben brought up. I think that is a really, really big deal.